Hello, hello, we are live. Welcome to our weekly prep. My name is Frank Kramer. I'm your host and I'm the founder of Eat Like a Vegan Chef. In today's episode, we are going to prepare a nut crusted lentil loaf. So before I continue, I would like to wish all the moms out there a happy Mother's Day. And uh, I, I hope that you have a wonderful day today. You definitely deserve to be celebrated and pumped today. Okay, let's move on to our recipe. Uh, in today's recipe, it is actually split into two parts. It is basically the lentils that we need to cook today, and then the loaf which is made from the lentils and beans and many other vegetables. So I'll get there in just a minute. Uh, obviously, this lentil loaf is part of our meal plan for next week. And uh, you can absolutely cook it for Mother's Day as well, if you if you like to do so. Um, if anyone is cooking with me, just let me know. So I'll go a little bit slower. Uh, other, otherwise, we start cooking. I have already the lentils on the stove and I will explain this in just a second. Okay, so our weekly meal plan, I, if anyone has any questions for uh, any of the other recipes, I will go over them after the uh, lentil loaf. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in between if you don't have the time to watch the entire live stream. But um, again, I'm here if you have any questions. Good, okay, so let me switch my camera and I will show you what I have done so far uh, because I have started cooking the lentils because it would take on too much time. So the, uh, the lentils itself, uh, I have cooked with onions, garlic, tomato paste, basically you have to take onions and garlic uh, until they caramelize. Then I added tomato paste. Um, I browned the tomato paste, meaning caramelizing it slightly, added cumin to it, then a three quarter cup of lentils and two and a half cups of water, a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar to give it a little bit of uh, acidity and it's cooking right now. Because otherwise it would take far too long to cook the, the lentils uh, together to the same time when we do the loaf. So the loaf is basically uh, consists of uh, you know, onions, garlic, celery, carrots, ginger, mushrooms, um, coriander, cumin, smoked paprika, uh, tomato paste, spinach, and then obviously uh, the flax meal which we thicken. But I will go through this, I will explain to you how I cook the, the loaf, and uh, so you have a good idea. So, uh, by the way, if you don't mind saying hello so I know you're there, it's always nice to talk to an audience. Otherwise, I only see numbers, and uh, it's always nice to see who's there. And, uh, hi, Sherry. Hi, Barbara. It's, it, it's nice to talk to an audience. Okay, good. So let me switch my camera so you can see what I do here. Hi, Barbara. <clears throat> Good. So let um, let me know if you can hear me properly. If you give me a quick yes, you can hear me loud and clear.
Okay, so I have the lentils cooking, simmering on medium heat. So what I'm going to do with those lentils, basically I want to cook them and keep them as dry as possible because the reason why later when we do our meatloaf, um, sorry, our lentil loaf, uh, I don't even know how I get to meat. I don't eat any meat since years. Um, we, we want to make sure that our lentils are cooked, but they have as little liquid as possible so that's why i uh, when you see the recipe i didn't give too much water obviously you may have to add more water in order to cook the lentils thoroughly but we want to make sure that the liquid where the lentils are cooked in it's evaporating towards the end very very important because the more liquid you have left inside the lentils, the more flux meal you need in order to bind the, uh, the entire mixture. Very important. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the back burner here. Put this here. And then we'll start the ingredients for our meatloaf, uh, meatloaf again, for our lentil loaf. This is really crazy. Meatloaf, I don't know. I mean, I know we, we, we have taken this from the meatloaf, but um, I don't even know why I, I get to this word. It's crazy. Good. Um, I have medium to high heat under this large pan. I'm going to add my onions and garlic. And we start sauteing that. As usual, we cook without oil. So you can add a little bit of water to it. You can add it now or once it starts sauteing. Okay. And when you, when you cook anything or when you prep for your week ahead, you want to make sure that you have all your ingredients ready to go. Like I have here, my celery, my carrots. I have my beans, they're drained already. My mushrooms, they're chopped, washed and chopped. Uh, you want to have all the ingredients ready so you can flawlessly cook without uh, taking a break in between. This is very important when you start your cooking process. So for instance, um, again, with batch cooking, you want to start with the dish that takes the longest and finish with the dish that takes the shortest time. So in this case, we only do one, uh, one meal. We still have some, you know, preparation to do. For instance, the lentils here take 45 minutes to cook. So that's why I started with them. Okay. And by the time they're ready, my, my loaf should be ready. And then we can uh, put the ingredients together and start our loaf. And anytime you have any questions, just put them in the in the comments, comment box. And as soon as I get back to the screen, I will answer them. So you can see it, it turns slightly brown here. You add a little bit of water. You want to add as little water possible. The more water you add, uh, the more your vegetables steam. We don't want them to steam. We want to create flavor by caramelizing our onions.
Okay, so soon we can add our carrots and celery, but I'd just like to see a little bit more caramelization here. And I'm watching my lentils at the same time. I still need a lot more water. You can also do your lentils in, a, in the instant pot, but there you cannot really control your moisture. You see how brown the onions get? I want to make sure that we loosen this. This is all flavor. As long as it doesn't turn black, it all is flavor and it's adding to the, to the dish, to the overall flavor. So now we can add our carrots and celery. And again, we you smell the celery. Celery is such a beautiful flavor. It adds such a beautiful stock-like flavor to any dish. It's just fantastic. Can add our mushrooms, and of course, our mushrooms add uh, a lot of umami flavor to it. If you really love umami, you can exchange regular mushrooms or these bella mushrooms, you can exchange them with shiitake mushrooms, or even better, dried shiitake mushrooms. Dried shiitake mushrooms have the highest amount of umami flavor of all vegetables. So it's really up to you. I, I use these mushrooms because I'm going to caramelize them and they give me this rich flavor later in my meatloaf. Meatloaf, again, lentil loaf. And very soon we are going to add our spices. And we're just going to caramelize the onions, the mushrooms a little bit more. just a little bit. Sometimes when you add too many vegetables, the pan cools down. The same with if you add too much water to your pan, the pan is cooling down. So you, you want to avoid this by having the pan cooling down too much. going to add one and a half teaspoon of small paprika, one teaspoon of 
cumin. A piece of ginger if you have. If not, you can add quarter teaspoon of um, powder. Some coriander, about a quarter teaspoon. So now we're going to expose it to the heat <clears throat> while our mushrooms caramelize. I can smell the cumin. Fantastic. Great flavor. And you can also see that my pan is starting to turn brown. Before it burns, we're going to add a little bit of liquid to it. And scrape all the brown residue off the pan. Tell the caramelization, caramelization starts and the spices adding to the flavor and the color. So, we can at this stage you can literally caramelize it for another five to ten minutes, but I'm not going to do this because of time reasons. Remember, you can caramelize the mushrooms until they're really brown, but I'm not going to do this in this case. So I'm going to add my two tablespoons of tomato paste. And I'm going to let it brown a little bit. You see, the tomato paste is naturally very wet. And I want to make sure that it turns slightly brown. First of all, I do not want the tomato flavor in here. I'm only looking for the depth flavor and a, a rich color of my loaf. Obviously, it adds some, some sort of tomato flavor to the loaf, but not too much. The acidity definitely is going away by sauteing it long enough. I'm going to add a little bit of liquid. And you can tell the tomato paste is still not 100% raw. So I'm going to let it saute just a little bit longer. But it's getting there. I'm going to check my lentils. take off my lid because I want the rest of the water to evaporate. You can see which cannot be seen. You know if you can tell there is um, some liquid left but I want it really really dry. So while we're finishing this up I'm going to make sure that my lentil is becoming really dry. Okay, now it's the time to add the bean, <clears throat> the bean straight. We 
add up all one couple of plugins. to chop my spinach which is coming going into the meat log in a few minutes. Almost there. The flavors are just absolutely incredible. The cumin, ginger, the smoked paprika, such a beautiful aroma. And I'm still leaving it to caramelize a little bit more. So what we can do is, if you think you have too much liquid in your lentil, what we're going to do is, I'm going to drain my lentils. I don't know if you can see this. And I'm catching the liquid. So just in case there's any liquid left, I'm gonna catch it right here because we can utilize this for the salt later, okay? I know this, this loaf seems to be a lot of work, but it lasts you for quite a few days. And you can freeze these, and uh, it's just like other people do meatballs or meat loaves or steaks, you can freeze them later and use them for any, any type of meal or add them as a protein. So at this point, we just want to make sure that our, I'm loosening up all the, the residue in the pan here because this is pure flavor. I want to make sure that it all goes into the pan, into the uh, ingredients. inside the pan there's nothing left and this is the time when we want to keep the stew as dry as possible okay so now we can add our beans oh I'm sorry our lentils and you can see I have quite a lot of liquid left. Okay, so I'm going to expose it to the heat. This is the time we want to add additional flavor to it. If you cook with salt, now is the time to add salt to it. pepper. And we're going to taste it. But this is the time we're going to cook down the liquid, the moisture in here. So it's very important that we keep this mixture as dry as possible. That's why I don't like to give uh, measurements of liquid because it's quite misleading in the end. Everyone uses a different amount of liquid. Taste it now. Mm. 
Mm. Oh my goodness. Wow, what a flavor explosion. Guys. Okay. So we can add our spinach to it. And the mixture is getting a lot drier, which is really great. If you wanted to, you can utilize this pan later to make your sauce. I recommend either a marinara sauce or a red pepper sauce, a bell pepper sauce. And I will explain to you how, how to make this. It's very simple. Okay, so the next step is to utilize about one third or maybe even half of this loaf mixture uh, and blending it either in a food processor in a, or in a blender. So, and I will explain to you why we do this. By pureeing some of this here, you give this loaf the chance to bind properly. Because when I add my flax meal later on to it, it's going to be a breeze to bind this. As you can see, the, it, you know, it's difficult to blind, to, to, um, to bind this with flax meal because there's no liquid in here. There's no sauce in there. So it's only rough ingredients, so to speak. So by blending this here, I, I get a more smoothie-like consistency. I add it to it, and that gives me the opportunity to uh, bind all the ingredients together. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have my food processor here, um, but that's okay. So you can tell, you see what I'm talking about this? This is more like a mousse consistency, and that's that's what I want. Okay, add this to it, and this will bind the entire mixture together with my... So now I'm going to turn off the fire. Mix it all together. And now you can see that the mixture is forming more like a loaf consistency. The best way to bring this all together is in a bowl. And we're going to do this. You can see what I do. All together in here. Again, you can utilize this for 
this pan for the sauce. If you'd like to make the sauce in here, and you scrape all these flavors here, the residue of the pan inside your sauce, and it's gonna be awesome. Okay, I'm going to start with a quarter cup of flax meal. And I, I know I need a lot more than that, but I always start with a small amount. And I probably need as much as a cup. It all depends how much liquid you have left in this bean mixture. And you can tell it's already binding. But we need a lot more. It looks like it's good, but it's not. One more. Should be good. I mean, it's really up to you how how much you're going to thicken it. I mean, bind it. But I the reason why I do this this way, I will show you in a second. In order to form the lentil loaf, you need to have a certain consistency. going to make a little space here. And I'm going to roll the first loaf. You can make any type of um, shape. You can make it a round shape. You can make it a triangle. You can make it a sausage-like shape. You can make it like uh, little bean balls, like meatballs, whatever your heart desires, you can do. So in this case, I'm just going to make it a like a sausage like. You can do it this way, or you can make it like a like a little loaf, for instance. Okay. You see me? Sorry. A little low, for instance, and then if you I actually call it for a nut crust, you don't have to put a nut crust on it, but um, that's way to put it on the oven now because we need it. Of course, I didn't chop my nuts before the show, so now that I have to do this now. So you see, you caught me off guard here. That should be done before, but it's okay. Uh, you can use any type of nuts. I have almonds here. You can use walnuts. You can use uh, mixed nuts. Peanuts, whatever your heart desires, you can use, or you just leave the nuts out. It's really up to you. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to roll the loaf in here. Let's see if you can see me properly. Okay, so you want to just roll it just like this. Make sure that you have nuts on all sides. Okay. 
So that's basically, and believe me, this, um, this is one of my favorite loads. It's a lot of work or a little work or a little bit more work than, than usual. But look, the amount we have here, we can make quite a few loaves out of this. I'm sure we can make 10 out of these. Um, and then we can freeze them. Um, this is going in the oven now. And then uh, just so that the nuts are starting to uh, roast a little bit. And of course, we want to um, recreate more flavor when we put it in the oven and uh, just roast it for another 25 minutes. It will bring all the flavors together. And you, okay, let me switch my camera so we can, I can talk to you. Okay, so here we go again. Um, this is basically how your how your loaf looks like, basically. And you actually have a picture on my um, on the recipe, but that's how it looks. It's really cute. Um, again, you can make it in any shape you want. You can make it. Um, you can make it round, you can make it triangular, you know, it's really up to you. Let's see if we have any questions. Okay, so I see we have quite a few have joined us. Hi, Herman. Hi, Lynn. Karen. Um, Linda. Okay, good. Um, can we add ingredients like peppers? Absolutely. Good question, Karen. Absolutely. You can add peppers, whatever you like. Keep in mind, towards the end, you want to make sure that the loaf mixture is dry. And um, otherwise, you have to add too much uh, flax meal to it. Flax meal is very, very healthy for you. So don't get me wrong. You can use as much flax meal, flax meal if you want, as you want. It's, it's just perfect for you. Very, very good for you. So don't get me wrong. Um, but again, the more flax meal you add to it, the more pastier the, the texture becomes so you, you don't want it too gooey okay if you if you know what i mean okay good good okay we i see we have uh, quite a few more moms um came to our live stream. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. I hope you have an awesome day. Okay, good. Um, so basically, now it's for me to finish my mixer, mixture and make as many loaves as I can out of that. And I'm going to uh, roast it in the oven for another 20, 25 minutes. You can do it for 40 minutes if you want. If you want it crispy, if you want it crispy on the outside, soft in the inside, that's perfectly fine. Uh, there is no right or wrong, so to speak. So from that point of view, it's, uh, I, I would recommend about 25 minutes at 350 degrees. It's just fine. And the sauce, I recommend a bell pepper sauce or a marinara sauce. Bell pepper sauce is probably the easiest way. You just saute onions. Um, if you want garlic, you add garlic to it. Some basil. And then you add red peppers, of course, seeded, washed, cut in pieces. And you cook it until it becomes slightly soft. If you like to add salt and pepper to it, you can do that. Then you put it into a blender and just blend all the ingredients. You don't want to make sure you want to make sure that you don't add too much water to it. You don't want it too liquid. So the peppers should be just slightly you know, liquid with, you know, mixed with a little water. Other than that, you just uh, blend it 
and you have a beautiful sauce. Absolutely stunning. You can add a little bit of lemon juice to it or balsamic vinegar just to give it a little acidity to it. And that you can basically pour on your plate first. Then you add your uh, lentil loaf on top of it. Um, it's just, it's a very, very nice combination. You can serve it with sauteed spinach. You can add some mashed potatoes or purple potatoes, whatever your heart desires, you can add to it. Okay. Um, to me, this, this dish is always has a special place in my heart, so to speak, because it's, it's, um, it's very festive and it fits perfectly for Mother's Day, I, I believe. Um, good. Okay. Uh, let's, let's talk about, if you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, um, let's talk about the other, uh, recipes. We have our black bean panna pasta, which is, you know, quite a, actually, I should share my screen with you so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Let, let me see if I can do this. Should be this one here. Okay, yeah, you should be able to see it. Okay, so as you can see, this is our uh, lentil loaf. Um, actually, I made it with my Nari sauce last time, but you can use it with uh, bell pepper sauce. And the bell pepper sauce, this is our recipe. It's just bell pepper, onion, Tabasco, basil leaves. That's, that's all there is to it. Very, very simple. You cook all the ingredients, then blend it, add a little bit of water to it or broth, if you like, and that's it. Okay. Our black bean panna pasta is, um, is one of my meals, which I took for my, my regular restaurant experience, because it's a, I find it's a beautiful dish. Uh, very colorful, but very, very simple, very simple. So, um, for the sauce, we basically have a, uh, a white bean leek sauce or leek bean sauce, so to speak, mixed with turmeric, which makes it really uh, yellowish and some cauliflower to make it a little bit more, uh, semi consistent, very simple and nutritional yeast. Very simple. And the, uh, the ingredients for the pasta, I think they're very straightforward. We, uh, we obviously we cook the pasta and we create our sauce, which is onions, garlic, a leek, uh, mini peppers, Swiss chard, uh, ground pepper, salt, and then we mix our pasta in there. Very straightforward. Um, we have our, we also have a, my, my special dinner. Very simple. Uh, it looks, it looks maybe a little bit, uh, overwhelming, but it's not. It's if you really look at the ingredients, they are very, very, uh, simple. So, um, we have our spring vegetable soup, which is one of my favorite soups. It's just, um, it brings together spring ingredients in a semi, uh, thick consistency of a soup. I love it. Uh, it's made the consistency is made with beans. Uh, you can make it a clear soup, but I chose to make it a, a creamy soup, so to speak. Uh, the white, the potatoes and the white beans make it creamy and the asparagus blends, uh, it's spring flavor, so to speak. Okay. So does anyone else has any questions about this week's meal plans? Thank you, Eusebio. Thank you. Um, I, I, I find that 
making sure that we make our meals as beautiful as possible um, adds to the excitement at the end of the day. Because if we don't, um, if we don't cook for our eyes, what what it's you know it doesn't do us any justice. It's it's really really important to to cook um, for our eyes because it's important. It's important to eat a beautiful meal. Okay, good. Uh, does anyone else has any questions? Um, before I forget, on Monday, we have our challenge ceremony. I hope uh, anyone who joined the challenge, you're, you know, everyone is welcome to come to the uh, um, challenge ceremony. We're going to find out who is the winner of the challenge. And uh, as, as always, I'm going to offer ways to get another two weeks of free access to my recipes okay good have a great day everyone um happy mother's day to all the moms out there thank you so much for joining me today i hope you have an awesome day and i'll see you next week have a great day be safe and think plant-based